Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University. Today, we'll be teaching you how to play React, a game by Chris Lin and published by Brother Ming Games. Let's get to the game. In React, players take on the roles of different artists fighting against each other in a field of combat. Players will program their intentions and their reactions with the aim of placing their tokens, summoning support standees, attempting to complete their own personal masterpieces, and ultimately take the tactical advantage to defeat their opponents in combat. The first player to hit their opponent three times, or drain them of their deck of cards, will win the game. To set up, lay out the main board and then on one side, in the five slots, place the five React chain markers. Each player chooses an artist character known as an entrant and takes all of its matching components. This includes your entrance large standee, your large information card, which includes any passive abilities and some information on how you should play, your smaller reference card, which should be flipped to its unascended side, and three cards which represent your masterpiece and they'll make up a continuous picture. These should be flipped over to the coloured side up. Other components will depend on your character. Most players will have a deck of cards which is shuffled and the rules we'll explain first apply to characters who have decks. You may have some special summon standees and the cards which go with them. And you may have a collection of tokens which combos with the cards in your deck and characters. Place your standee on the starred starting space of your side of the board and follow any other setup instructions on your entrance card. Both players draw four cards from their decks. Choose a player to be the turn player on the first turn and you're now ready to play. React is played in turns, and on each turn, one player will be known as the turn player, and you'll take turns back and forward with alternating players being the turn player. Both the turn player and the non-turn player will be able to take actions during each turn, but the turn player has more options available. Each turn is played in four phases. First is the masterpiece phase, where the turn player gets to attempt to progress their masterpiece. If they successfully complete the three-part masterpiece, the player's entrant will ascend to its stronger self. Second is the draw phase. Both players draw one card into hand, up to a maximum of six. Third is the main phase, and here the players will use cards from their hands, or cards belonging to their standees, to program different combinations of intentions and reactions. Each set of these is called a reaction chain and will represent a sequence of actions which are resolved from back to front. The turn player is the only one who can initiate a reaction chain and may initiate any number of such chains in a turn, while both players are permitted to play reactions into those chains. These are the actions which will move standees around the board, place tokens and ultimately launch attacks. Finally comes the end phase in which you'll refresh for the next turn. Play then passes to the next turn with the other player as the turn player. React is a duel and your aim is to target and damage the opponent's entrant. Entrants have three health. If you suffer a damage, flip one of your masterpiece cards over to its black and white side. If all three cards are flipped, you immediately lose the game. You can also lose the game if your draw deck is empty and you're instructed to draw another card. So now let's look at each phase of a turn in detail. The first phase of each turn is the masterpiece phase, and this is done only by the turn player. Your aim is to get the three segments of your masterpiece adjacent to each other in the right order in the five masterpiece spaces at the side of the main board. For the purposes of this phase and this mechanism, it doesn't matter whether the cards are coloured side or black and white side up. Flipping a card to its black and white side purely tracks your health. For all other purposes, the card is treated the same regardless of which side is up. In the masterpiece phase, the turn player progresses their masterpiece once. This means move one card from your masterpiece onto one of the five slots 
of the Masterpiece Zone. If all five slots are full, then you can replace one of your opponent's Masterpiece cards with one of your own. And if you have no Masterpiece cards off the board, then you can swap any two Masterpiece cards that are on the board. When you complete your Masterpiece, remove all three cards from the Masterpiece Zone and then flip your Entrance Reference card over to its Ascended side. This will have more powerful abilities on it. Note that each player also has a way of progressing their Masterpiece a second time on each of their turns, using one of the intentions on their Entrance Reference card. The action that allows this will be weaker than the other action in terms of the effects it has on the main board and only one of the two effects will be usable each turn. The second phase is the draw phase, and here each player, both turn and non-turn, draws one card from deck into hand. Maximum hand limit is 6, and if your hand is full, you do not draw. Otherwise, drawing is mandatory, and if you have no cards left in your deck to draw, you automatically lose the game. Third is the main phase, and here the turn player will start off React Chains, which will trigger actions on the main board. There are two types of effects in the game, Intentions, which are shown with blue text, and Reactions, which are shown with red. In order to start a React Chain, you must do this with an Intention. You may use an Intention card from hand, or your Entrance Reference card, or the reference card of a summons which is on the board. Take the intention card and play it in the one slot of the reaction chain. If it has multiple options, declare which one you're using. Then pay its cost, which represents any text in the blue box. For this bottom action, for example, the cost is to exhaust me, that is, exhaust the standee represented by the card, and target an orthogonally adjacent zone. When you exhaust a standee, rotate it 90 degrees from all the other standees. Leave it in this orientation until the end of the turn. It's to remind you that you're not allowed to exhaust that standee again. If the cost is to target a zone, then you'll take the number one token and place it into a valid target zone. The orientation of the arrow doesn't matter. If the cost is to choose a direction, then rotate the current slots token into one of the four cardinal directions. In this way, most of these costs mean that you'll be choosing a target zone or direction before you've seen what reaction cards are going to occur. Cards are ultimately going to be resolved in reverse number order, meaning that your intentions may not be the outcome of your action. Once the intention has been played, the non-turn player now has the first opportunity to play a reaction card, that is any card with a red effect, into the number two slot of the reaction chain. As for the intentions, this could come from hand, or it could be a standees card if that standee has a reaction effect. If the reaction has a cost in the red box, that cost is paid now. Opportunity then passes back and forward between the turn player and the non-turn player, each having opportunities to play reactions, but not intentions. Bear in mind that it is only the opportunity to play a reaction which passes back and forward, not the requirement to. If the turn player plays a reaction in slot 3, then the non-turn player has the opportunity to play a reaction in slot 4. If they pass that up, it goes back to the turn player, who can, in effect, play a reaction to their own reaction. The reaction chain is complete only after both players pass in sequence, or after five cards have been played in the sequence. You'll now resolve that reaction chain, starting from highest number, and going backwards to the lowest number. Some of your most powerful turns in the game are going to be about making these reaction chains work for you. That is, stringing a couple of actions together to get in the best tactical position to damage your opponent. And it can be as important, or even more important, to react to your own intentions as it is to react to your opponents. But be aware that it's not uncommon for many intentions to pass in the game without being reacted to. And it's key to find the best tactical moment to play your reactions. Most of the actions available to the different entrants are unique. 
there's really only four standard actions that everyone may have. Move simply allows a standee to move one space orthogonally adjacent, or into some other destination if the effects of your card say so. A particular special move, common to a couple of entrants, is jump, meaning to move to the next open space in a certain direction. For example, this would be a jump, as would this. Only one standee may occupy each zone. If this one were attempting to move in this direction, for example, then the movement would be unsuccessful and the standee's movement would simply be ignored. Some character actions allow for summoning, which brings one of that character's secondary summon standees into play. Once in play, that summon's reference card can be used for its actions. Once again, there can be only one standee per zone, so if a summon were to occur but a standee were already present, the summon fails. The third general effect is damage, and generally speaking, your action will tell you to damage a zone, and it may be a zone that you've chosen by a target earlier. Damaging a zone damages the standee in the zone. If the standee is a summons, it has only one health and is removed from the board but can be re-summoned later on. If the target is an entrance, then lose one health by flipping over a masterpiece card. Be warned that friendly fire is possible. If you target a zone for damage and then the opponent's reactions puts your standee in that zone, it is you who will suffer damage at your own hand. The last of the general actions, which we described before, was to progress your masterpiece. And once again, this will be attached to the weaker of your entrance actions on the board. A target token from the reaction chain, once it's been placed into a zone, doesn't get moved while resolving that chain. Similar to the example with damage before, whatever was going to happen in this targeted zone will always happen in that zone. Even, for example, if a standee had targeted an adjacent zone and is then moved away before the effect in that zone is resolved. How to treat the tokens belonging to the different entrants, on the other hand, depends on the rules for that entrant, which can be read on the information cards. The dancer, for example, has scale tokens which are placed in zones, and they never move, even if characters move out of them. While the calligrapher has ink tokens which are used to ink standees, and so these tokens would be placed on the standees and would move around with them. Many entrants have passive abilities, and if you're resolving the sequence of a react chain and one triggers, interrupt it to resolve the passive effect before continuing. Finally, do note that many effects in the game do not differentiate between your standees and opponents. The calligraphers summoning or flowing ink could equally ink their own standees or the opponents, and will be able to combo with other cards in different ways depending on which is chosen. Once a reaction chain has been fully resolved from right to left, players retrieve their cards from the chain and reset the tokens. Cards from standees come back into your face-up display. You won't be able to use them again this turn because the standees are exhausted, but you'll be able to use them again from subsequent turns. Cards from your deck go into your discard pile when they return, never to be used again then the turn player has the opportunity to start off another reaction chain using another intention card available to them. Resolve that chain in the same way and continue resolving chains until the turn player either cannot or does not wish to start another reaction chain. Then it's time for the end of turn phase. If your entrant has a passive ability which resolves at the end of the turn, then do this now and refresh all of both players' standees that were exhausted during that turn, back to the conventional orientation. Play then passes to the next turn with the opposite player serving as the turn player. Continue taking turns in this way until one player's entrant has lost all three health, or until a player must draw a card and has none remaining in deck. The uniquely designed characters in React all represent different areas of the arts and are designed to play quite differently. They'll often move, deal with their standees, and place tokens and damage in different ways. But critically, players aren't overwhelmed with choices or combos. Each of the entrance deck is composed of copies of only four different cards. 
forcing you to understand how those cards work together and how to make the most out of that limited range of actions. Players should also be aware of the special character known as the Painter. While we won't cover her rules in detail in this video, the Painter has no deck of cards and instead has an inspiration resource, which is drawn in place of cards, and a set of dice, which are rolled and then spent to resolve the actions on all of the different standees cards. And that's how to play React. We hope that you enjoy the video. We are using a prototype copy of the game, and so the rules and components may not be final. And do check out the project page for the game. We'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you find this video useful, please help us by hitting the like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do that and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.